focus on you. Hello, everybody. Hello, 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 hello. We are live here on Facebook, and we have a great guest. This is Real Estate Talk, by the way. Real Estate Talk, TGIF, and this is episode 64. 64. We have done 63 weeks in a row. We, we had an extra one, and we're at 64. Real Estate Talk, TGIF. TGIF, you know what that stands for. That stands for Thank God It's Finale. That's right. Not Friday. <laughs> it's Friday, but Thank God It's Finale. We are here with a friend of mine from California, uh, Luther Sanchez. Luther is, I, I, I've met Luther through other friends, and you may have seen the episode where we had uh, Luther's broker on, Joe Viescusa, um, and it's just been great people to meet, great people to collaborate with over the years in co conjunction with John Cheplak and other things that we've done. And uh, Luther is, first and foremost, for me, and I think a lot of people out there, a great father, a great dad, great husband. Uh, if, you, if you're if you connected with Luther, you see, you know, his, his love for his family and everything else. And then he's a real estate agent. I, I, I think that's the best way to put it. Would you agree with that? The first is your family, right? I definitely would. Yeah. No, it wasn't always that way, which is one of the lessons I wanted to share. But yes. That's right. We're going to we're going to go into that. But I, but, you know, Luther's uh, started as a part time agent, became uh, a great superstar agent. So uh, I've been lucky to uh, have uh, ha ha have time with Luther in the past, uh, become friends to a point and then just, you know, just be able to collaborate. So, Luther, welcome to the broadcast. Uh, tell us about you. Tell us about your story. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Definitely. Uh, I, I value our friendship and I thank you for, for what you're doing. So uh, how far back do you want to go? Well, let's go back to like when you started in business and then your transition into real estate. Because that's, I mean, that's, the I think, the, the, the most fun or the most interesting for a lot of people because a lot of people have the same story. And, and one of the things I've noticed in my lifetime is that people need to have this feeling that they're not alone, that they went through similar stuff and so it's like oh yeah him too so that's where i want you to go if you could do that for me that'd be great okay i was just having a conversation with somebody the other day in regards to the transition from going part-time to full-time and i was sharing uh essentially my story so uh, i i originally went to school for engineering it took a while for me to declare myself on what i wanted to do i have a complicated mind so i i just <laughs> i related pretty well with these engineers that overthink sometimes so I ended up going into the civil aspect of the engineering and I, I went to Cerritos College, community college, and I went to uh, Cal Poly Pomona out here in LA County. And um, I, I finished my degree in engineering and jumped right into that field. So for four years, I, I did that for the county of LA. And I just remember sitting there because as in at the beginning stage of that, you work on the same, same part of the projects on different projects. So you're kind of doing the same thing over and over again. Uh, behind the cubicle and I was always like my my dreams and ambitions were pretty big and I was just like doing a timeline like hey it's gonna it's gonna take me a while especially with the pay and the school debt that I had so I ended up just going back and uh, reassessing the situation I went in and and started looking for a part-time job now I was still taking uh, my my graduate courses I was still going to school I was working and I thought I got to get into something a little more aggressive. So I started, a friend of mine was doing real estate and I just so happened to go with him when he was showing a home and I saw a deal be put together. And I thought if he could do it, I'm sure I could do it. So I tried that, I took some courses. Back then it was just through uh, college courses I had to take. I had to go to another college to take the course. Now you could take it online. And I got my, my uh, license, started doing it in the, real, in the weekends only. And I worked my way into making a little more money than I was making as a, as a full-time engineer. So I went in and took the leap of faith. Five, it took me five years. That's how long I thought about it and started getting comfortable with everything. It took me five years to just say, I'm only going to do this. And keep in mind, I got a lot of resistance from uh, family, friends, like what? You're going to go from civil engineering, all those years you went through school, and jump into what anybody could do, just get a license and you're a real estate agent. So yeah. I was fighting with that. So I knew if I had to do this, I had to go all in and make it work. So I did that. And shortly after that, I started tasting success a little bit, you know, started going well. Uh, at a young age, I was, you know, you're making over a hundred grand and it's like, wow, you start focusing on the wrong things. So I, I ended up getting married. Uh, my wife at the time, 
was a, a loan agent, so we did pretty well. And I made a lot of the mistakes that um, I value because I learned the lessons. I lost the money, but I didn't lose the lessons. And when you combine just bad habits along the way and not uh, spending your money right, not investing it right, not treating money the way it should be, and even though it's made a certain way, because we can make a lot of money in this industry, what ended up happening is once you combine that with some, some a little bit of marital problems, uh, the market, a couple of lawsuits, I call it the perfect storm that hit me all at once. So there was a right. lot of stuff that started happening in my life and I just wasn't prepared for it. Uh, I didn't have the wisdom to overcome those issues that came my way. I didn't have the people I surrounded me with that can advise me on what to do. So ended up just tumbling down because I did end up going through, through a divorce at the time because the number one cause of divorces is money problems, right? Well, with, if you add the economy, there's other things, but the economy, uh, the sales went down and I got, I got stuck with my pants down with, uh, with the market, not with the marriage, with the market where I was building because I stepped away from sales, something I learned as well not to do. I stepped away and I would even tell some of my past clients like, oh no, I can't list the property. I'm, I'm an investor now. I only flip homes and I build homes. And I was building a few, you know, little, those mini mansions, they call them. And it's buying a small house in a good area, tearing it down and making a four to 5,000 square foot home. You walk right. away with a good three to $400,000 profit. Uh, the problem is when you're doing a couple of those and the market goes down and you make five, 600,000 less than what you thought you were going to make and all your money's in there, it's a big problem, especially right. if you don't have the bread and butter money coming in that I let go, which was the real estate sales. And uh, on top of that, just, you know, having to file one BK and, and trying to do it one way and the court says, no, 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 you're going to reorganize your debt. I had to go in and, and start making money to catch up to all the people I had to pay back. So once I, once the dust settled from everything and I started from like negative, you know, 350,000, uh, I had to work for a few years to pay all that money back. And it, it's hard on top of how, how hard our, our job is, right? I had to just know that I had to work for a while with not making any money myself because when they reorganize your debt, you're paying stuff and they give you a certain amount of money to, to live on. So uh, that's when, you know, I'd say about 2000, end of 2009, that's when I joined C21 All-Stars. One of the things I value on Joe is that he would, he would hear me kind of slip into like, whoa, it was me, this is what happened, pa pa pa. He's like, okay, that's enough. Are you done with that? Now let's get on to the productive thing. So compartmentalize your time and work on all that stuff you need to work on in an hour and a half of your day. On the rest, you need to change your mindset. You need to focus on income producing activities and get back on your feet because that's where you need to be at. And I had to get back to the basics because I didn't. Ha I had to start all over, but I knew what I had to do to get myself there. And I'm talking door knocking, open houses, all the basic stuff that I knew work. I couldn't be searching for the magic pill. I couldn't be searching for anything different, which is what a lot of people try to do. So that's another one of the big lessons I learned. And here we are uh, six, seven years later uh, from when I started making money and you know, I was able to, to, you know, one, the other lesson I learned is buy income property, not just blow it all because it's funny how it's like, where does it all go? I don't know. If you don't have those goals in place, that's what happens. So I built a little, uh, you know, a good portfolio of income property and, and uh, you know, combined with the sales and the flips that I still do. Uh, I, I, I feel I got it somewhat down, but I'm coachable and I aspire to always do better in those departments and all while living that balance that supposedly balanced uh, family life as well. That's, that, I'm just gonna say one word, wow. I mean, that, I mean you went through so much stuff in, 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 in six, seven minutes that is just so incredible that I want to break it down if that's okay with you. Sure. But the first thing I do, I do need to say one thing that um, the, you said the main cause of divorce was money. I, I, I have to disagree with that. The main cause of divorce is marriage. So just so everybody <laughs> knows that the main cause of divorce is marriage, right? So just so you know, uh, anyway, I just want to throw that joke in there. Anyway, <laughs> um, you you're taking it from a guy who really knows anyway. So, you went from a civil engineering uh, job to started part time. Talk to me about the trials and tribulations of being a part time real estate agent when you did that. Tell me about what started. I mean, we, we talked about several of these things that, you know, you, 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 were, you were very gung ho and stuff. And tell me about how that worked out. 
All right, yeah, I was gung ho until I got to pound the pavement and, and get objections and it kind of feeling lost. And that's where I value having, uh, being associated with a company that has good training and good direction is able to, to show you and inspire you and also create the environment that, that inspires you to do more. And when you hit those valleys, you're gonna hit the peaks, but when you hit the valleys, it's like you have things around you that inspire you to keep on going. So back then the challenge was that, hey, I, I, I just wasn't getting results month after month after month. And I would reach out to a few people and they just they just weren't helpful. It was, it, I know it's a doggy dog world. It's every man for himself. That actually, that, that phrase just always stuck with me because I'll never forget the gentleman that told me when I was asking him question after question after question on how to do things. And back then, just even using the MLS, it's, it was like, it looked like a DOS program and things were just not oh, wow. self-explanatory and it was just like complicated to use. Everything is just so user-friendly now, but it was complicated and I was just trying to have him help me. And at some point he just stopped. His name's Tony. I won't say his last name because he's still in the business. He said, Luther, you got to understand one thing. You can't be going around like bugging agents on how to do things. It's every man for himself. You got to figure things out for on your own. Okay. So I got some work to do. Just let me focus over here. I just felt like, man, that, I mean, if you would have understood, he was actually helping me because it really inspired me to do good and also help the people that, that, that you know, people come out all the time and they, they ask me for help. And I also compartmentalize those people because uh, it's a lot of them, especially when in a company with over 260 people here, there's always people asking me for help. So uh, I set time aside to, to really help them out. So I, I don't want to make them feel the way this guy made me feel at one point. Right. And, 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 and with with what I do with, with with coaching and stuff, I actually have a, a brand new part time program that I'm launching in a few weeks. And, and one of the most important parts of that program is to find someone that you can ask questions to. Right. So, I mean, they say, well, ask questions, ask questions. You always got to ask questions. Right. You're only as good as your last question and all that other stuff. But when you come across someone like that, that's going to tell you that, look, I mean, figuring stuff out yourself. I get that. But you do need. Would you agree? You do need an agent that's been doing it to answer some of the questions that we all, we all may think they're stupid, right? Yes. So, um, all right. So you, you got into that. What were some of the activities as you moved on? You said five years part time. So what were some of the activities that started working for you or someone told you to do that enabled you to start building up an income to move into that full time area? It was, it was hardcore door knocking, door knocking and open houses. And back then, our, our broker at the time didn't even allow us to use his copy machine. So I had to get somebody's flyer already and put my little business card over theirs and go to Kinko's and be there at a certain time because we would go door, knock, door knocking from 9 to 12 and just make 200 copies. And I had to get rid of those 200 copies door to door. It was very simple. And when I came back, if after taking a lunch, I didn't have business to follow up with, up with i had to go back and do it again and that was how you started building your business but that was but was was that was that when you were full-time or when you were part-time oh that was already full-time but i did in the weekends i did you know when i worked weekends uh back then only weekends it was open houses and some door right. knocking so the door knocking would take place early in the morning and the open house right after so when you when you were part time is one thing I just want to get into one one specific item and talk about time. Right. I always tell people if you're going to be part time, be part time. Don't be some time. Right. And, and, and the point behind that is to actually do the work. What was what schedule did you set up for yourself in that situation when you were part time? It was in the evenings, which is lead follow up, looking for properties for my clients and in the weekend. I, I had to invite and even set appointments with with the potential clients at the open houses. So when I was door knocking in the morning, if anybody wanted to see a home, I would schedule it right after the open house. So I would work, you know, the, back then being single, not having any kids, uh, I just had all day. And once the evening came, that's a different story, but the day had to be working. So. I would, I would go as early as I could and then just end as late as I could as after, you know, I would show properties at night. So when you only restrict it to only weekends and you start getting busy, you're working from morning till night. So 
during the open house, I would just spread out the properties that I'm going to show and the people that were coming to the open house, uh, I would tell them and have a list ready of the other ones in the area that, that were available, similar to that one, and make appointments so that I'm ready to show them right after. So that's really interesting. You had properties that you were going to show, and you and those are the ones that you told people you would show them, other people that came to the open house. Is that how, how you worked your, your appointments out? Yes. That's really, that. This is this is really cool because a lot of people are going to go to open houses and look for that customer, and the customer will say, well, I want to see, you know, three houses here, three houses there, whatever. But what you did is really cool because you said, okay, these houses or four or five, whatever houses they were, are very are similar to this one. I can show you these, and those are the ones you showed. Yes, that's that's super cool. I mean, that's a that's a great thought. I mean, it sounds very simple, but you know, in, in my years, it's, this is this is one of the first times I've heard of that. I've heard something similar to that. So, um, when you when you started full time. Um, what else did you do aside from door knocking? Was it the typical things that people still do or people did back then? What, and what were they? I, I wasn't so good on the phone because I felt that uh, my skills weren't there. So I did have trouble getting on the phones for a while. Uh, as a matter of fact, nowadays, I find that even just to be hard getting back into it. But it's, it's, it was a challenge. So I've, I just felt comfortable face to face with people. So I focused on the door knocking and the open houses but what i transitioned into which which really like built on itself which was a center of influence i went on mike ferry seminar and he, he i remember him giving us a list of everybody that like he opened my mind to a lot of people that i can reach out to people that i know already that i do business with i mean i'm talking like even your the, the cleaners you go to everyone and right. i started reaching out to them they're like kind of like your warm, warm calls not so much of a cold call so I started building a database, which compounded into like a, the, the goose egg that I called it, that gives me a lot of business. If you, if you nurture it and treat it right and continue to bring it value. Yeah. One thing I want to point out and emphasize that what you just said is your sphere of influence, circle of influence, people have different names for it. And one of the things that you said was these were more warm calls than cold calls. Yeah. So it made it a little bit easier for you, right? You got to yeah. fix that. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> You know, but but it's it's just you know a, a, a great thought that everybody needs to hear, in that, you know, a lot of people say, well, I don't want to call people I know, I don't want to bug people I know. How did you handle? Did you have that feeling that you didn't want to call people you know and bug them? No, because I really felt like I was helping them. There's people that they they, they wanted to buy a house, they didn't know all the steps that were involved. And the moment I made a call and connected with somebody where they, they were very appreciative and you, you inform them of programs that they didn't even know were available, they now make it an option for them to buy a home. I was like, wow, like I need to tell more people about this. I didn't know, right. I, you make it, sometimes it seems like you think they know all the stuff they need to know to, to take advantage of their resources, but that's not always the case. Exactly, exactly. So. So your basis, your basis for your business, your basis for your business has always been what it's been. It's been open houses, sphere of influence, and what else have you used in your in, in the in your base business to build it? Well, the center of influence, past clients, the right. list that I that I told you about, going after everyone, and right. uh, th there's not much other than that right now. I mean, there's online marketing, like as far as building, like what, what allowed me to build. Uh, when I first started, there wasn't social media, but uh, now there's the online marketing that we do. Just making sure I have online presence for people to be able to find me. So, so over the years, right, you built your business and I want to get to the investing flipping thing in a minute, but I want to talk about one other thing. And, and I talk about this a lot and not a lot, but I, I talk about people to beware of. And you, well, in our conversation the other day, we talked about the magic pill, how you felt that you chased magic pills uh, all the time, almost, I think. I mean, I know I always did. Tell me about that. What were some of those pills that you chased? Uh, there, there's people that come along that, you know, make it sound, make things sound nice as far as you doing business a certain way. You can buy business. You can, they make it sound like, hey, you don't have to work that hard. So, this is an easy way to do the business and you're working too hard. So I, I did chase a couple of things like that. And I, at the end of the day, I realized, hey, there's not like just that, that 
interaction, that contact that I was getting that is more than anything is predictable, duplicatable, and for especially for somebody starting off it, is needed because you do the basics, but people don't realize how bad they do the basics sometimes. So you got to focus right. on doing the basics better so that you get really good and efficient at it. So everybody should listen to this. He said he, he Luther did the basics, found it to be duplicatable and how he did it, was able to do that. And that's one of the ways you were able to scale your business up. And then you started doing investing and all the other stuff. How did you, what, what made you start doing that? And how did it marry into your exact real estate sales business? That was your bread and butter. Because you had said that you didn't do that well once and then you got back into it. Yeah, I did it well, but I didn't um, see. I let go of the sales, and now, like, if I were to get let go of the sales, I'm letting go of you know half a million dollar income, and it's a business, so I got to treat it like a business, and also be improving on that business for it to be efficient. Because what I built is worth a good amount, where it continues to give me that residual income, and the the clients, if I treat them right, will always be referring, always be coming back. So I have to take care of that. And what I did is before I just went all in into investing. And what I mean is flipping properties, uh, just doing addition projects and, and uh, tear downs and doing these uh, little mini mansions that they call them where I, I'm going in and, and sometimes it's just a vacant lot. Sometimes it's a dilapidated home that needs to be torn down and you build something nice in a decent area that gives you a nice return. I mean, you're building, uh, well, back then it was like about $100 a square foot and you're selling for like $400 a square foot. It just, it makes sense. So I would have those projects and you have, you know, three, four projects like that. Then you're, you're making a million dollars there. Why do I need to deal with clients and everything that comes with the sales? So that little chip on my shoulder didn't allow me to continue this other business. So what I'm doing now is I'm not letting go of that. I still treat my business here and do it in a way. There's a lot of improvement. Don't get me wrong. I'm not doing a hundred deals uh, from the deals I do make, I, I just feel there's always improvements that I can make. At the same time, I come across uh, deals that I can I can flip, I can do additions to, I can build, and I allocate a certain amount of time and I keep it manageable so that, you know, and I still have contractors that bail on me. I still deal with all that stuff, which is time consuming, but I look at the return on investment on my money and my time and over here, my money and my time, because it's not much money, but the little money I do put in there, it does not compare to the return. If you look at the return on your money over here, it's, you know, 25, 30% over here in the sales, it's over a thousand because you're not, you're just putting in your time. You're putting in time over there as well. So I want to make sure I'm taking advantage of what's on the table for me here with my skills and my mindset and what I can capture. And also there's deals that I list I come I come across that I want to do so I do that and then the money I, I make sure I invest it into uh, income producing properties as well and I have my goal with the properties that are, are income producing for me I'm setting up pretty much everything for my family my kids and it's allowing us to give us a lifestyle now that my kids are getting a little older <laughs> they're just two that's older for me but once they once they get to a certain point I'm really gonna do what you said at the beginning which is it's my time with my family and then every and all my other time is when I work and make things happen. But that's that's a priority. Right. So all right. So so tell me, um, you've you've gone from you've gone from part time to full time, from doing your real estate business to to getting in really good into vest, investing and flipping and stuff. And you are you own properties as well? Yes. And you do all that management yourself? I do. Okay. I do. So, so, so the reason I ask you those questions that way is, is, is for this question is, all right, so you, 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 you work in real estate sales, you're an investor, you're a developer, you're a builder, you have property management you need to do with your, with your properties that you do own. How much time yeah. do you work a week and when do you work? Well, I got to, how do I you got... manage it to get to where you go? Well, like, like this morning, I mean, I, I, I woke up at 430. So I'm at the gym at five. I leave about 630. I get home, get ready. And I spend about 30 minutes uh, with my kids. We had a little bit of a rough night, but uh, that's why my kids were asleep when I left this morning. But typically when they sleep well, I go ahead and spend about 30 minutes with them in the morning, make sure I kiss them goodbye, maybe feed them depending on what they're, where they're at. So 
uh, I was getting them up at some point, but it's like somebody told me, no, let them sleep. Their brains are developing. So I kind of go off of their schedule, but they, they're, they're waking up about 30 minutes before I leave. So then after that, uh, I get to the office at eight, about 8.30, and I work till about 5.30, and then I go home and spend time with my family. And I don't work uh, weekends. And you're able to do everything you need to do with your sales business, your investing business, your building business, your property management business. You're basically, you're basically able to do it all in that time frame. Yes. You use the word um, you use the word earlier a couple of times. That word is compartmentalize. And it seems that that seems to be the key. I'm going to assume that it's the key. Tell me how that works for you and how you do that. It doesn't always work out, okay? But when I do it and I stick to it, because I always have to come back and force myself to stay within those compartments, uh, it's allocating the certain amount of time in the morning to make sure that that task gets carried out and done. So the ideal morning is I'm, I'm when I'm getting here, I go through whatever, you know, there's some sometimes hot files that need to happen. Like today, I'm... I'm special recording a file. I got to uh, do a final walkthrough on that property and make sure I get the client to the county recorder's office, come back and give them the keys and make sure everything is is happening the way it's supposed to be. Now, little things come up and it does throw off my schedule sometimes. Um, but in that in the in the plan, it's like taking care of those things first thing in the morning and making sure I delegate to the parties involved that need to be delegated to. And that includes uh, like my contractor, uh, I, I do the sales, but then there's my contractor. There's uh, people that are out doing a couple of things for me, my affiliates. So making sure everybody's on the same page because we orchestrate in, in our transactions so many different parties. I got to make sure nobody needs anything from me. And just about a month and a half ago, I finally got like a really good assistant. So she's helping me with so many things. So I meet with her and go over the files on what needs to happen. She's another person that needs to pretty much run on her own and I need to say, okay, these are the things we need to accomplish today and these are the things we need to work on. So after that, then I do I do my calls and my calls uh, ideally would go from like 9.30 to 12 and those are prospecting calls, things that come up on my, on my dashboard and clients that I need to reach out to, potential business uh, listings is my focus. So I'm focusing on bringing value to the people that are on the table right now that I'm possibly doing business with, center of influence, past clients. I take a short lunch. If I'm meeting with someone, then I, I go to lunch with them. It's it's ideal for me to have food here and I eat here and I spend right. you know, no more than 15 minutes eating. Uh, it's valuable to me when I just you know break bread with my assistant and while we're eating, we, we actually go over some of the progress and goals and things that have to get done. And after that, it's going back to... Uh, lead follow-up and then my appointments that I go on uh, typically they're all between like 2 and 5 30 and sometimes it'll go a little bit later than that and I just have a thing with uh, with my family where if I take some of the evening time then I make it up the next day or from time to time I'm having to coordinate a couple of things in the weekend that's not a problem it's not like hey I can't work evenings or I can't right. work. you know nobody right. can get a hold of me so I'm doing things. Leads are coming in. Uh, people are calling me, so I'm delegating those as well to lenders and and my assistant. That's fantastic. So, in other words, would you would you um, would you say that your compartmentalizing is similar to time blocking? Uh, what is similar to time blocking? Your compartmentalization. Well, how oh. you compartmentalize your stuff? Yes, that that's what it is. It's time okay. blocking. Yes. Okay. And, and and that's why I wanted that's why I wanted to get into that thought process of how you do it, and 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 that's if everybody's listening to this is 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 Luther, who is 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 a super agent out in California, has taken his business and time blocked it so that there's priorities, which is family, and um, made the ideal of having a great growing business. And your business is always growing. I assume I know. Um, to be able to do that, you've made sure that you blocked and compartmentalized everything that had to get done. And you know what? Like you said, you, you made a really good point. And a really good point is what I always tell people is if you can't get something done in that block or in that compartment, you need to make sure that you do it somewhere else and set it up to get done. 
and you just you just said the same thing. What do you think is um, what do you think is key for most real estate agents for success? Is there is there something that you would suggest to people for that? Well, the most important time block is prospecting. And what happens is so many things get in the way and you're getting ready to get ready to, to, to do nothing. And at the end of the day, it's like, tell me the contacts that you made. That's the most important one. So at the end of the day, if you didn't make the contacts that you set out to make to begin with, you're not doing your job because there's, it's like we produce, we, we confuse activity with productivity. So we do yeah. all kinds of things. And I, especially me, I get busy with things that come up. I'm always moving and shaking. And, and it's like, at the end of the day, I always ask myself, how many new people did I talk to? And how many of my calls that I was supposed to make did I make? And, and I, I hate that feeling. So it's like, sometimes I'm in, it's, it's nighttime and I'm shooting out texts and emails and I'm like, I look at that as like, I'm taking time away from my family. I shouldn't be doing that, but I feel bad about not doing my job. Now it's different. Sometimes my kids fall asleep, wife falls asleep early, and then I catch up on work. Uh, I do that as well. And you know, that's sometimes I'm realizing, damn, I didn't make the contacts I didn't have to make. So it's a constant adjustment that you have to make, but the time blocking allows you to keep that in perspective. So a couple of quick points on what you just said to bring out as takeaways from that is time blocking. People waste time getting ready to get ready. It's easy to get distracted is one of the things I took from there. And you have to keep your eye on what you're supposed to be doing. It's like golf, right? Keep your head down, your eye on the ball and follow through. Yes. That's, the way, that's the way you look at a lot of things. I'm, I'm a golfer, so that's, that's the way I look at things. So one of the questions I want to ask you um, is what do you think, what, what was good for you in transitioning from the part-time to the full-time? What was, uh, what was important to you in that transition and just to do it? I really remember having so much time because I was used to only being able to do things in a short amount of time and having all day, it's like, there's really a lot of time to get your, your job done, your contacts done. And I started noticing that people fill it with all kinds of things. I mean, just distractions at the office is a big one. Uh, after that, it's like just not not really like focusing on getting all the things that you have to do done. So I realized that it's, it's a double-edged sword about us having our own schedule because I'm used to keeping a very tight schedule where I came from. And if you were off schedule, which is you're late, uh, you're not turning in a project on time, it's very simple. You got fired. So right. sometimes right. we just wouldn't see someone. What happened? Oh, they got fired. We don't get fired in our, our business, unfortunately. So who holds us accountable? There's no consequences. So it's a double-edged sword. It can work against a lot of people that don't have that discipline. Well, that's, you know, it, it seems to be my theme this week. You just brought up the same thing I've been talking about all week in my lives is talking about showing up and doing your job. And if you run a regular nine to five job, there are things you're going to have to do and accomplish or else you're going to get fired. And the yeah. other point that I make from time to time, and you just said it, we are our own boss. And if we suck as a boss, we're going to suck at our jobs. Yes. You no. Know? So, Louis, I want to, I, I, we're, we're up against time now. We both have lots, lots of stuff. And, and, and this was really great. <laughs> I hope there's a lot of value that people think we saw here. I want to ask you if there's anything else that you want to bring forward that you found, that you found or find really important in your business to just share with everybody. There's a lot of people that don't keep a database and some people even do, but don't do anything with it. And some people have a lot of people in their database. It's just like the people get lost in the sea of contacts in their, in their list. So it's the relationship with the people in the database that matters. You gotta be doing something different, uh, like 22 years in the business that I'm in versus your first year in the business. And that's gonna be having that database that you nurture and bring value to so that it returns business to you, because it will. And uh, it just mind boggles me how people don't do that. And what else are they gonna do? Go back to doing the same thing that they did in the first year in the business to get business. Right, Yeah. right. So Luz, I wanna thank you so much. Um, how do people, if they wanna reach out to you, how do they contact you if they have any questions? Uh, email is best, but um, I'm going to post this on social media. I'm sure you're, you said you're, is this live right now? 
This is live right okay. now, and and you'll have a you'll have the video. Okay, uh, you said you were going to go live with me. Did you end up doing that? We are live right now. Okay, no, on my page. Uh, yes, you should be live on your page as well. Okay, so then, so then uh, they can contact me there. That'd be the best way if that's a platform they're seeing on, and uh, I'll, I'll you know Messenger or Instagram. That's right. a good way to get right. a hold of me as well. Now I, I I know I mean there's a, it took me a while you know for us to get together and Joe was on it and I don't know if Joe's got his but I know there's a matter of the hat it seems that everybody wants this hat right so I just want you to know that I'm going to get it to you uh, I just got a new shipment in Joe just got his I think because um, I sent the whole bunch out so I hope this is good for you yeah any way we can speed that delivery that'd be great man I really want that hat cool cool <laughs> we're gonna speed that up. So I want to I want to thank you, Luther Sanchez, for coming on. Um, you know what? I, I I really appreciate everything you do in your business, and you know you're a great example for uh, a, a lot of human beings out there for how you are with your family, how you are with your business. And thank you once again for coming on. Stay on for a minute after we after we sign off. But everybody, I want to thank you all for watching. Look forward to another great show next week, and we've got so much stuff coming up um, aside from programs that are coming out. My name is Dave Finale. This is Luther Sanchez. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you maybe later. Who knows? Yeah. Thank take you. Take care. All right. Take care. Bye.